In order to understand the minimal sufficient statistic, it helps to have a simple example. Suppose you have a die, and there are two possibilities. Either the die is fair, or the even numbers are twice as likely as the odd numbers to come up. So we have two possible probability distributions, and the possible values of x for one roll of the die are the values 1 through 6. We're going to compare a couple of statistics. The first statistic, t, is simply going to be 0 if x is odd and 1 if x is even. This will turn out to be the minimal sufficient statistic. The second statistic is 1, 2, 3, or 4 when x is, but f when x is 5, we'll say it's 3, and when x is 6, we'll say it's 4. In a single roll of the die, we're taking these six possibilities and dividing it. We're partitioning it. If t equals 0, that means we're in the group 1, 3, 5. If t equals 1, we're in the group 2, 4, 6. And so when you pass on only the statistic, it tells you which of these two groups you're in. And it turns out, for our purposes, that's the relevant piece of information. So that will do the job. This other statistic, u, is going to have a value of 1 for 1, 2 for 2, 3 if you're 3 or 5, and 4 if you're 4 or 6. Notice this is a finer partition. It cuts the possibilities into four sets, corresponding to the values of u, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Now, first of all, we need to check that these are actually sufficient statistics before we talk about which one is minimal. With an example this small, I'm going to use the definition of sufficient statistic to verify that t and u are both sufficient statistics. The most basic idea is that it doesn't matter which probability distribution you have if you're evaluating the probability of x having a value given that the statistic had a value. In other words, knowing which distribution it is does not affect those probabilities. Why is that relevant? Because if you don't need more data, just the sufficient statistic to estimate theta, then theta does not depend on the data. But that works both ways. So the data does not depend on theta. And that's what we're going to show here, is that it doesn't matter whether we consider the first or the second possibility, we're going to get the same conditional probabilities for x given t. Now, for t, I could boil it down to four cases. The probability that x is a specific odd number when t equals 0 is 1 third, because all the odd numbers are equally likely. And that's true in either one. The probability that x is a specific odd number given that t equals 1 is 0, because t equals 1 means it's even. Likewise, the probability that x is a specific even number given that t is 0 is 0. And finally, the probability that x is a specific odd number given that t equals 1 is 1 third, because if you know you have an even number, 1 6, 1 6, 1 6, those are all equally likely. And if you have an odd number, 1 6, 1 6, 1 6, those are all equally likely. And with the other value of theta, the other distribution, if it's even, 2 9 2 9 2 9 they're all equally likely. And if it's odd, 1 9 1 9 1 9 they're still all equally likely, which means when you've narrowed it down to that, the probability is 1 third. So t is a sufficient statistic. u is a little more elaborate, so I made this grid. x indicates the row u indicates the column, and these numbers represent the probability of x given the statistic. And since u is 1, 2, 3, 4, when x is 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, then these are simply 1s here and the rest of the columns are zeros. If u is 3, that means that x is either 3 or 5 and it's equally likely. So 1 half, 1 half. And if u is 4, x is 4 or 6, then that's equally likely. 1 half, 1 half. And that is true whether you look at this distribution or this one, this distribution or this one. So u is also a sufficient statistic. All right, we finally have two sufficient statistics, and we can compare them and see if one of them is minimal. Now for the definition. t is a minimal sufficient statistic if it is a function of any other, for example, u. That seems kind of cryptic on the face of it. But we can check the condition. Given our t and u, whenever u is even, t is 1. And whenever u is odd, t is 0. So t is a function of u. However, that mapping is not 1 to 1, so u is not a function of t. 
So T is a candidate for the minimal sufficient statistic, but this right here wasn't a proof because you can't compare with every possible sufficient statistic ever. We need a better way to tell whether or not it's minimal. Okay, let's talk about what the definition of minimal sufficient statistic really means. Now, as usual, there's a easy to understand casual description and then the technical description looks nothing like it until we expand it out. The short form is a minimal sufficient statistic is taking the smallest amount of data from the data set possible that provides the answer that you're looking for. Out of all the different sufficient statistics you could use, the minimal one is the simplest. So how do we judge that? Remember that any of these statistics is a partition, right? We have the numbers one through six and the T statistic partitions it into odds and evens. Remember, conceptually, we're trying to distinguish between a die that's fair and a die that treats the odds and evens differently. If we're going to be able to make this distinction, we have to separate the odds and the evens. We can do more than that and have a sufficient statistic, such as u, which breaks it into four categories, 1, 2, u equals 3, and u equals 4. But notice that is a finer partition. So one way to think about it is a minimal sufficient statistic is the coarsest partition possible that will convey the information you need. And you can't get any coarser than separating the odds and the evens. Now, what do we mean about t of x being a function of any other? Well, to be a function of it, that means if you have different x's that give the same u, then they also have to give the same t because t is a function of u. So in other words, if u of x equals u of y, then t of x equals t of y. That's what we need for t to be a function of u. What that means visually is that t is a coarser partition. The pieces of t have to contain only entire pieces of u. All right, that's the rough concept, but we need a way to calculate this. So we have this theorem. Uh, it's a bit wordy, so I tried to break it up a little. Let f of x given theta be the PMF or PEF of x. Now, if there exists t of x that satisfies this condition, then t is a minimal sufficient statistic. The condition is for all x and y, f of x given theta over f of y given theta is free of theta if and only if t of x equals t of y. So there's a lot there. Let's try and apply this theorem to this example. We already know what we want t to be. It's zero for odd and one for even. So we're claiming that this exists and we have to check whether it satisfies this condition. It's an if and only if, so let's start by assuming t of x equals t of y. From that, we want to show for all x and y, this fraction is free of theta. All right, let's get to it. If t of x equals t of y, x and y are both even or both odd. Now, every probability in the PA case is 1 sixth. So the ratio is always going to be one. For the B case, the uneven die, if X and Y are both even, then the FX given B is two ninths, because that's the only value. And same for Y, two ninths. So two ninths over two ninths is one. If X and Y are both odd, then we have one ninth, one ninth, one ninth. So it's one ninth over one ninth. In every case we get one, which is in fact free of theta. That's covered all the possibilities if t of x equals t of y. Now we have to show the other way around. If t of x is not t of y, then this has to fail. So it's not true for all x and y, this is true, which means there has to exist x and y such that this depends on theta. That's actually not gonna be hard to come up with because if t of x does not equal t of y, we're talking about one odd and one even, and they have different probabilities in the two cases. In the first case, all the probabilities are still 1 sixth, so the fraction is still 1. But in the B case, we're talking about 1 even, 1 odd. That means we're either going to get 1 ninth over 2 ninths or 2 ninths over 1 ninth. So we're either going to get 1 half or 2. And so it depends on whether it's A or B, so it is not free of theta. Therefore, T, finally, is the minimal sufficient statistic.